Hello, Fritz. The Bears are who we thought they were. The Bears. The Bears. I am the great Cornholio. We'll see what happens. Uh, the playoffs? See, oh, uh, Sean McDonough, Jay Phillips. Coots! Um, can you play a song? <laughs> Something cool. Put my mic on! I'm calling both games! Oh, 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 baby! You so oh. Goes down the field for Smith! Oh, for those of you who haven't, you know, tuned into we'll to the, the last few shows, uh, so the, so the Big Twelve, uh, little background. Big Twelve has uh, come out and, and invited BYU, Houston, UCF, and Cincinnati. Um, I believe 2023 or 2025 uh, to come in to their conference due to Oklahoma and Texas leaving for the SEC in 2025. So I came out, uh, I had the, the notification live on air a few weeks ago, uh, about, two, about three weeks ago, I think it was, three or four weeks ago, and uh, and I said, I, I don't really like this move, I, I don't think it really does much for me, I think it's a weak move, and people did not like that, They, to say the least, they did not agree with me, uh, and then two weeks ago, I uh, came out again and, and gave a much more in-depth um, view on things, and people hated that even more. And so this week, for the first time in a while, I had some free time. So I did some research. People were jumping down my throat, telling me, and people were mean about this. When I say they're jumping down my throat, they told me that uh, I need to get a J job. It's the most uneducated, biased take they've ever heard. Logic isn't your forte. Quit embarrassing yourself. Shut up until you do research. You don't know anything. You don't know what you're talking about. You're going to be a failure. Thank you for all the support. I really appreciate it, first and foremost. I just want to tell you that I am so appreciative for your support. Uh, so so I did some research, and this hopefully should shut up the haters because you know this just shows they're trying to do my research. They clearly didn't do theirs because BYU hasn't done all that great against Power 5 teams. And and this is funny because out of, out of Cincinnati, Houston, UCF, and BYU, uh, BYU since 2003 has had the second best win percentage. Out of those four teams, BYU's had the second best win percentage against Power 5 teams since 2003, and it's 43.8%, which isn't, it's not awful compared to some of the other ones, but, and then this is against all Power 5 teams, meaning good and bad. So, and, and I say, and here's the thing, if you can only win 43% of games against Power 5 teams, and that's since 2003, right? And and I understand that that is, that is, you know, very broad. And that is, you know, you're saying, oh, I, you know, okay, well, give me give me something more recent. Well, you asked for it since 2015. I figured, hey, that's within six years. That's decent. And this is this is including the three games that they've played this season against Power 5 teams. Two of them ranked. And you know, they're three and zero against Power Five this year, but again, this is including this year, the the, the first three games this year. Since 2015, BYU is 11 and 16 against Power Five teams, which results in it, which you know comes out to a 40 percent, uh, 40 uh, 40 percent win percentage against Power Five teams since 2015. Not all that great, and you know, again, I, you know, people are saying. You know that, and it wasn't. I never said that they couldn't, you know, compete with big five or power five teams. That wasn't my point. My point was that they won't be good in the power five. They won't have, you know, they won't have overwhelming success in the power five. And for that reason, these additions don't don't really add too much to to the Big Twelve. It's just more mediocre teams. And I mean, okay, we can. I mean, we can add mediocre teams till the cows come home, right? While we're at it, let's just and, and this is my this was my point. If we're just gonna if this is the standard for letting Power Five teams in, let's just let them all in. San Diego State, Utah State, UNLV, Wyoming. Why not? Right? You have a good year. You know, you have one good year or or, or a stretch of three decent years. Does that make you Power Five <laughs> worthy all of a sudden? I I'm not seeing it. And again, since 2015, BYU is 11 and 16 against Power Five teams, and that's including the three games that they've won against power five this season so you take those three games out and their win percentage drops to an abysmal 33 percent so 
you know, and and you know, okay, so the argument was the argument was not even wasn't just that hey they, they're good against Power Five teams. The argument was they beat good Power Five teams. So I took my research a step further and looked at top the BYU against top twenty five since two thousand three. Since two thousand three, BYU is thirteen and twenty five against top twenty five teams, and this is top twenty five when they played them. Thirteen and twenty five is a thirty four point two percent win percentage. You say, okay, I that that's very broad. I need more. All right, you asked for it since 2015, and this is including the two games against top 25 teams that they've beat this season. They are 7-10 since 2015 against top 25 teams. Now, this is not top 25 power 5 teams. This is top 25 teams overall. So, for example, right, they played Coastal Carolina last year, and they've played Boise State a few times over the years. Those are not power 5 teams, but they were top 25. And so, you know, you know like... For example, they beat Boise State a couple times when they were top 25. And I put that in there because, you know, maybe the argument is, okay, not only do they beat Power 5 teams, but they also beat good teams, right? And and so you, you want to say, oh, well, you take Boise State out. They don't really matter, right? Okay, well, that's taking two wins away. And then you, you take uh, this year out, right? If you're going from 2015 to 2020, you take two wins out. All of a sudden, again, their win percentage since 2015 against top 25 teams falls to 33%. So this was my point. Uh, and and so so people saying, okay, well, well maybe, you know, the, the, and they're going to change their story a little bit, right? I can just see this happening. They're going to say, oh, that's not, that's not what I meant. I didn't mean that they couldn't beat power five teams. They're going to get all flustered because they're, I'm proving that, I'm proving that they're wrong. Um, and again, okay, if if a if a forty percent if a forty you know forty percent win percentage is the standard for what it means to be a good team, then that means any team is is good, right? And people said, oh well, you know, pe people say, oh well, and this was another thing that that was a very big comment in my past few few takes on this set, on this topic was every conference has bad teams every year, which I mean. <laughs> Thank you, Sherlock. No, no, duh. Of course, every conference has bad teams. Somebody's got to, you know, lose the majority of games. Not you. You can't win them all, right? So, so, but, but, but it's like, oh, oh, every team, every conference has bad teams in a year. Okay, so what are you saying? We should just add more bad teams, and we should just add more teams to, you know, that that are gonna be bad. I just don't get it. What's the point? You're just, you're just throwing out more fluff to try to make your point seem valid, and it's not. Um, and in and, and 2015, BYU, uh, all four losses in that season came against Power 5 teams, and they were 1-4 and four against Power 5 as a whole that season. And you want to make the argument, well, they, 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 they take care of, of the bad teams, and they beat the good ones. Well, we, we already proved that that's not so much the case as... Uh, since 2003, they are they have a 34 uh, percent. You know, they've only won 34 percent of their games against the top 25, and only 41 percent since 2015. Back in, oh, I, I it's a lot, a lot, a lot on this spreadsheet, so it's, it takes me a while to find this. But I mean, there there was a year. Here we go. 2013, they lost to Virginia. Who finished and Virginia finished in 2013. Virginia finished the year two and ten, and they lost. And you might say, "Oh, maybe that was a that was a down year for BYU." No, BYU finished that year eight and five. They made a bowl game, uh, and and all that that year. So that you know that, that was a fun year. They they actually beat 15th ranked Texas that year. But they they've gotten they've gotten shown up by Utah in the past, and when Utah was five and seven, fin you know finished in the year five and seven, not having such a great year. Um, you know they they've lost to 2015. They lost to five and they lost to uh, Missouri, who finished the year five and seven. 2016, they lost to UCLA, who finished the year four and eight. Um, and they just don't, you know. And, and as of as of uh, as of late, like since 2019, they are one, two, three, four, five. They're five and two against Power Five since since 2019. And I mean, okay. 
right? You take two years. Two years doesn't mean really, really all that much. I think five years, five to six years is a good sample size for how they've done over time. And as I said, if if forty three percent, if forty percent view, if winning forty percent of games against Power Five is the standard, if that's what you guys meant by saying, oh, that they're good against Power Five. Then I mean, okay, I guess you could make the case for anybody, right? Let's let Tulane in, let's let Tulsa in, let's let SMU in, let's let um, let's let San Jose State in, let's let Hawaii in, Fresno State, uh, Memphis, let's let them all in, right? Oh, you know, it's just incredibly, incredibly uneducated on on the part of saying that BYU um, is going to have great success against power five and in the big 12 and the funny thing is you might say wow maybe byu isn't that great and maybe i was wrong byu is one of the better teams against power five compare in comparison to some of these other teams so you know i'm gonna and, and but byu is a, was one that people said no no byu is gonna be good they've won 40 percent of games against power five since 2015 and only uh, and only 40 and their, their win percentage isn't all that different against top 25 either since 2015 so and that's my point they do no better against playing average power five teams than they do playing top 25 teams and maybe you say oh well, you know, maybe in a way i'm sure you can twist that you can twist these numbers to say anything you want so i'm sure that the people somebody's gonna gonna twist these numbers just to to prove their point but these are very broad statistics, and I'm just not seeing how a forty per, how a how a win percentage of forty percent does anything. I'm not sure how that is viewed as good. And again, I understand that every conference has has bad teams, right? I'm not telling you that. I'm sure that if you look at Kansas or Rutgers over the years, um, or who's another team that hasn't been very good? Maybe Arizona is is one. I'm sure you're going to say, well, I mean, take a look at those Power 5 teams. Those are teams that are already in the Power 5, and they don't do well against other Power 5 competition. And, okay, that's very true. But that doesn't mean that we should add more teams that can't do anything, that can't produce against Power 5. That's that's proving my point. Why should we add teams that, why should we add more teams that can't be Power 5? There's no reason, there's no good reason that we should add more teams that can't win to Power 5. Like, it's already an issue that we have. Why make it worse? And again, this is you know you take those teams Rutgers, Arizona, um, and and Kansas, and you say, well, they, they can't be Power Five. Well, that and and that's true. That's very true. And they they can't do it when they're playing a whole season of Power Five competition. I mean, this is when BYU and BYU is has played has played more Power Five uh, games than anybody else due to the fact that they are an independent school, right? Houston, Cincinnati, and UCF haven't gotten the same opportunity as BYU because they have a conference, right? But BYU, you know, they've played out of twelve games in a out of twelve games in a college football season. In twenty nineteen, they played four games against Power Five. They went two and two. Uh, twenty eighteen, they they played a fair amount. Uh, actually, only one more, which was five games, and they went two and three. 2017, they played four games against Power 5 competition and lost all four. 2016, they played... Well, 2016, they played a lot of games. They played a good amount. They played about half their schedule was Power 5, uh, six games that year. They only went three and three. So if, if this level of media... you know, Being a mediocre team against Power 5, if that's the standard... Then I, that just really, really disappoints me because if, if we're just going to be saying that hey, any team that that can win, you know, a little less than half of their games against Power Five competition overall, and again, this isn't even talking about good Power Five or good teams. This is just Power Five in general. So if that's the standard, then I mean, are we just going to let anybody who who wins? three out of six or two out of six games against power five we're just gonna let anybody in and and people said they're gonna do good against power five no they're not and you know why because they've they've proven that over the past five you know four or five years they can't 
And that is when they don't play them for a whole season. So, you know, maybe, maybe you play a game against Wyoming, it's an easy win. You play a game against Utah State, it's a rivalry, maybe not going to be easy every year, but it's not as difficult as playing 13th ranked LSU in 2017 or, or playing a stretch of, of, of ranked Power 5 competition. You, know, you, you it's fine to play cupcakes all year and and be and get prepared for a game against a tough team right you know you only play four te- four good teams that year four power five teams that year you better prepare for those teams it's your only it's your only good competition of the year you better prepare you better uh, you know you better take that seriously because if you don't you're just showing that that football's not important to you and I mean, again, winning winning forty percent of your games against Power Five, if that's considered good, then I mean, oh my, I mean that's disappointing. If that's if that is what we are considering good, oh boy, have our standards really dropped down the toilet? We got to up our game if because people are saying, oh my god, this does so much for college football. This is gonna make college football so much better. No, it doesn't. It adds more mediocre teams to college football, which is something that you guys complained about, saying that, oh my god, there's 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 teams in Power 5 conferences that aren't good. But now, we're, okay, so we're just going to add more teams that, can't, <laughs> that, that aren't going to excel against Power 5? Is that really the standard we're trying to set? Is it? I'm asking you. I'm truly asking you. Is that really the standard we're trying to set for college football moving forward? So next time you insult me to death about doing research, remember this. I'm a college student whose main worry is not how BYU has fared against Power 5 teams in the past 20 years. And before you tell me to shut up and call me a biased, uneducated clown, do your own research, will you? Do your own research. Don't bring bring your own bias and, and, and opinions to the table. Bring your research to the table and prove me wrong. Prove me wrong with research, not insults. Insulting people gets you nowhere. And you know, if if you don't, if if the if these clowns don't learn that from from this, they're gonna learn it the hard way, and they're gonna run into some real big issues down the road. So before you insult me to death over over a college football team and how they fared against Power Five competition. I mean, that's such an arbitrary, you know, and this has, I mean, this is something that's not even going to be, you know, in, in, you know, be taken into, into action for not, for at least another two or three years. So for you to get that upset over, over me doing it, like for, for you to get that upset over my opinion on, on something, you know, oh, now I'm backing up with facts. Now I mean it. So before you insult me to death. And before you, you know, try to bury me on this topic, do me a favor, do your own research and prove me wrong with that rather than calling me, calling me things that I can't say on the air. Um, so, so these poor stats, as I mentioned, they, you know, since, uh, since where, okay, let me bring it back up real quick just so I can reference it again. Uh, since 2015, they, you know, or since 20, 2003, because uh, BYU used to be in the Mountain West with uh, Utah and TCU. Utah has since moved on to, to join the Pac, uh, Pac, then the Pac-10, now known as the Pac-12. And TCU moved on to join the Big 12 um, as well. So since 2003, BYU has had a 43% win uh, percentage against Power 5. And since 2015, only a win percentage of 40%. So... The, and that's just Power 5 overall. That's, you know, that's good and bad. So these poor stats are the reason that they're being invited to a poverty conference like the Big 12. They are begging for teams to join. Their two best teams just said, see, yeah, we're, we're hitting the road in, in, a, in, few, in four years. We're not going <laughs> to... That Magic Johnson thing with the Lakers. We, I'm not going to be here. That's Oklahoma and Texas. The, the, the two biggest and best members of the Big 12 said, sorry, we're going to the SEC, a real conference... See ya. So now the SEC is begging for teams to join their conference so that they don't fold like the uh, they don't they don't fold uh, and go through something similar to the to the big to the uh, Big East. Um, and and if if BYU was really all that good against uh, against Power Five and if they really excelled against 
good competition, we would have seen them invited to a to a conference ages ago. We would have seen them invited to the Pac-12 when the Pac-10 uh, advanced or uh, um, added teams and became the Pac-12. We would have seen we would have seen BYU, get, you know, be added to a to a good conference by now. And the reason being that they didn't is because they're not all that good against Power Five teams. So, as I've said previous, and so like I said, you know. I understand that people are going to say, "Oh, the, the the 2003 thing is is that's really broad and that's too broad." Okay, well they're not they're not they're nowhere near uh, they're they're nowhere you know they're actually worse since 2015. So it's just, I'm, I'm just trying not to laugh because it's really funny how people really jumped down my throat about this and they were they were really wrong and you know I'm sure people are going to say, "Okay, well that's that's Power Five as a whole. What about Big 12? No, 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 you you don't want to go there. Against future, I'm sorry, against current Big 12 teams, that's including Texas and Oklahoma. Since 2003, they're five and seven, a 40, a winning 41 percent of their games. Since 20, uh, since 2010, excuse me, they have gone two and four, which is a 33 percent win uh, percentage. Excuse me, um, their only two wins are against Texas. So. Against the future Big 12 since 2003, when I say future Big 12, I mean excluding Texas and Oklahoma. They're 2-6 and six against the future Big 12 since 2003. They're 2-6. and six. Their only two wins uh, were in 2006 and 2007. So they haven't won a game since 2007 against the future Big 12. And the majority of those games, like, they've only played... Big 12, right? Current Big 12. They've only played TCU, Texas, Oklahoma, and West Virginia. That's all they played. They haven't played anybody else. But I, I, I mean, if you can't beat, if you can't beat TCU or or West Virginia, I, I don't know if you can hang with Iowa State or Baylor or Oklahoma State or even Texas Tech. So BYU, I'm done. I'm done hearing what people have to say about why BYU is good uh, and why they're going to you know do well in the in the uh, in, in the in the Big 12 because they're not I'll be surprised if they if they come out and somehow you know if they could, if they, somehow they come out and they do really well against Power 5 and the Big 12 I mean and they you know and they just come out and they're just a dominant force and they just turn you know turn into a, a franchise school I'll be impressed. I will be thoroughly impressed and say, wow, I never would have seen that coming because I truly don't. I really don't see this coming uh, at all. I just don't see it. Uh, and, you know, I, I, I look at since 2015 one more time, I, I want to say this against Power 5 teams, the ones that they've, they've really only beaten the ones with that, that have, they've really only beaten teams that have had, that, that finished their season with a record under 500. Which is that doesn't prove anything to me. So I need to see more from them. Maybe somehow, and and as I said before, maybe recruiting. You know, they, they they'll be able to recruit better players. But you know, I I, I was one time at this uh, at an event for Maryland basketball, and the assistant coaches said they had a book when they were recruiting players in the ACC when Maryland was in the ACC. They had a book that basically told the these recruits that they're the best team in the ACC, right? And the way they do that is they just cherry pick any stats that they want, and they even they were very open saying, you know, we just tell them, hey, you know, they 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 select stats, you know, that that will prove that hey they're good uh, in the ACC, and this is why you should come to Maryland. He said, well, we also have the same book for the Big Ten, <laughs> telling them why why we're the best team in the Big Ten and why they should join uh, our school as opposed to other schools. So, you know, and I could have done that. And I'm sure people are going to say, well, if you take a look at their their win percentage against Pac-12 schools, they're going to say, wow, it's really good, and that's why they're going to do well against Power 5. But this, you know, how you've played against Pac-12 has nothing to do with how you're going to do in the Big 12. So I looked at Power 5 as a whole, and it's just not – I'm still not – and, you know, if they would have come out like – I'll be. I'll give you a little tease for the next one, Cincinnati, which I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna talk about Cincinnati uh, next time, next week. Like I didn't expect Cincinnati to, to. I thought Cincinnati was gonna be worse than BYU. I thought BYU was gonna be the best one. 
Cincinnati actually has a has a decent win percentage. I think that it's about fifty percent or or right around there. Um, so out of anybody in football, out of any team, I think Cincinnati actually might have the best chance of, of excelling in the big in the Power Five uh, and the Big Twelve uh, when they join. Um, so I mean BYU very well could could uh could hang with the with these teams i mean they they've shown that you know 40